I want to welcome you to our event. Today's event is independence, restoration of territorial integrity and youth cooperation. I would like to give floor Mr. Imadish, Chairman of the Competition of Young Leaders. Thank you very much. Your Excellency, Mr. Nagif Hamzaev, Your Excellency Dr. Ashraf Shikaliyev, Mr. Shubhaj Goyal, Mr. Sundar Singh, dear delegates, namaste. It is indeed a great day as well as an auspicious occasion since today we are joined by a very dynamic parliamentarian from Azerbaijan who also, who, who also happens to be a good old friend of India and he is currently here in New Delhi to promote the common cause of uh, promoting our bilateral and people-to-people -people relationship at large. Please accept my heartiest welcome to you, Your Excellency. At the outset, I express my deepest solidarity with the government and the people of Azerbaijan on the occasion of the Azerbaijan's 30 years of regaining independence. I wish the ongoing smart city, smart village, and green energy-led process of reconstruction of cities, villages, and cultural heritage sites all success. Both India and Azerbaijan are carrying out reform and opening up. India is building the new India, and Azerbaijan is building a smart Azerbaijan. Development strategies of both the countries call for even greater cooperation. Ladies and gentlemen, dear friends, the historical monument of Adeshka is a testimony of our shared cultural heritage. We are two youthful nations with a very young demographic dividend. The sound bilateral relationship and friendly cooperation have provided solid basis for youth-to-youth -youth cooperation and exchange mechanisms. Dear participants, the future of Azerbaijan and India lies in your hands. For this dialogue, I believe you will further consolidate the mutual understanding, get better ideas, and contribute more wisdom to the development of our bilateral relationship. CIVIL will continue to work with the embassy to institutionalize various exchange mechanisms in the days and the years to come. I once again wish to thank the learned ambassador of Azerbaijan for this wonderful reception, and uh, I wish the learned member of parliament all success uh, in his uh, very productive and brief visit to the national capital. Thank you very much. The floor is all yours. Thank you, sir. Uh, I am Sundar Singh, Deputy Secretary, Ministry of Youth Affairs and Sports. Uh, Your Excellency, the Ambassador of Azerbaijan, on behalf of the Ministry of Youth Affairs and Sports, Government of India, we welcome uh, His Excellency and the Dr. Ashraf, the dynamic ambassador of Azerbaijan, and Nakif Hamjayev, MP and youth leader from Azerbaijan. Uh, <clears throat> You will be glad to know that an MOU between the Government of India and the Government of Azerbaijan is under consideration and is likely to be finalized soon. I welcome again and all. I would like to invite His Excellency Mr. Ashraf Shkaliyev to share his opinions with us. Distinguished audience, it is Lovely being here, and Confederation of Young Leaders is a unique organization. It is an organization that unites young people passionate for the future of the country, which has vision and which do not afraid of responsibility to shoulder it. They are the future of every country, and 
it is a privilege to be partner in this event with Confederation of Young Leaders. Also, uh, very pleased that Honorable Deputy Secretary of, <coughs> of Minister of Youth is with us today. And what is important is that we are having here a very distinguished person, the person that India is proud of, the person that I personally call one of the gurus of tourism of India, Mr. Goyal. And I'm particularly happy that distinguished member of parliament of Azerbaijan, the co-chairman from Azerbaijani side of the interparliamentary friendship group that is to be established, Mr. Nagif Hamzaev, graced us today with his presence. The, uh, today we are celebrating the event that is multifaceted. So 30 years ago, Azerbaijan regained its independence. And regaining its independ of independence is an important step in every country's uh, future development. Today, 30 years after, Azerbaijan is a prosperous, modern, beautiful country. A country with strong economy, a country that is moving forward with, with uh, large paces. And here, I want to say that looking back, for 30 years we were longing to restore territorial integrity of Azerbaijan because we suffered from foreign occupation and the neighboring country Armenia occupied 20% of the territory of Azerbaijan. Now, last year, during the, the liberation war, we call it the patriotic war, during the 44 day of that war, we managed to restore fully our territorial integrity. So this is an extraordinary, huge achievement. Now, while we were happy to return the territories, with you, the future leaders, I want to share that, did, do you know the word urbicid, what it means? Does anyone know what it, this word means? Believe me, very recently I didn't know what it means either. That is normal. But I want to show you three cities of Azerbaijan. The three cities of Azerbaijan in the territories that we returned from under occupation. Can we have it, please? This is the city of Agda. You see, only walls. This is a purposeful killing of city, urbacy. That is the meaning of the word. Now, this is the city of Fizuli. The same situation, professionally destroyed city. This is the third city, it is Jalbari. The same story. 
Thank you. Thank you. So this is what means the word courtesy, and this is the reality. So liberated territories and restoration of it, uh, our territorial integrity, it has a price tag. The price tag to restore all these destroyed cities and villages. Now, people who live there, they have to return. For them to return, it has to be rebuilt. But people are living in beautiful, for almost three decades, they were living in beautiful city of Baku and other cities of Azerbaijan. Now, for them to return, it has to be rebuilt as a smart cities and smart villages. It has to be very attractive for people to, to come and settle there. It has to be very safe. And that is why the Honorable President of Azerbaijan announced that these liberated territories will be rebuilt as a green energy zone. Now, what it means? It means that the foreign companies uh, that possess technology in helping these territories to be revived, reconstructed as a smart cities and smart villages are welcome to step in. Now, what it means with you, distinguished young leaders? It means uh, young leaders are those who are not afraid to establish startups. It means Indian startups who are in renewable energy, who are in high technology, who are in construction who are in information and communication technologies, they can come and they can contribute and they will be gaining money there. Because huge money will be poured there to reconstruct these territories. These is opportunities. So as uh, a young leaders, confederation of young leaders, you spread, spread the word among the young entrepreneurs, the people with passion, the people who want to change the world to the better, they have an opportunity to come and help in uh, the big reconstruction projects in Azerbaijan. And I want to remind one thing. So before pandemic, we were talking with distinguished Mr. Himadrish and we were planning for 20 people of confederation of young leaders to visit Azerbaijan. I hope that next year, in year 2021, uh, 2022, we'll be able to realize this objective and the first visit of uh, Confederation delegation to Azerbaijan will take place. In Azerbaijan, we also have very passionate uh, young people's uh, associations, organizations. It is Asan Volunteers, very strong and dedicated organization. It is the Ministry of Foreign Affairs Volunteers. And young leaders, you should learn the skills, how to talk to people. That is important for leaders, to talk to people. So Asan service, Asan is providing services to people, population. And volunteers are helping the people, multiple people coming they're helping them to fill in documents, to uh, assist them in going to the right place, to assist them in follow-up on their applications. And that gets them skills. Skills, how to help people, how to talk to people, how to care for people. So this is important. And of course, diplomacy is also important for young leaders because it is your responsibility to take India to the brighter future. So long live India-Azerbaijan friendship 
And I hope that uh, with this event will set a strong foundation for use-to-use -use cooperation. Thank you. I would like to invite distinguished member of parliament, Mr. Nagib Hamzaev. And as you already know, he also represents young leaders from Azerbaijan side. Please. Excellency, Honorable Ambassador, young leaders, ladies and gentlemen. I am honored to be here and delivering a speech in front of you on behalf of the Parliament of the Republic of Azerbaijan as the head of the working group on Azerbaijan-India interparliamentary relations. A few days ago, we celebrated the Independence Restoration Day of the Azerbaijan Republic. The first year on independence in 1991 was very difficult and tragic for our country. And knowing the situation, Armenia took advantage of the negative process taking place in our country. As a result, Armenia occupied 20% of the internationally recognized uh, territories of Azerbaijan Republic, including myself, thousands of innocent youths, children, women, the elderly suffered from the results of this occupation for the last 30 years. We lost our families, beloved ones, we lost our home, we lost our childhood in the face of innocent babies brutal killed during these horrific events. However, Azerbaijan has always been devoted to the negotiation process. Over the past years, Azerbaijan has committed to the principles of settlement and tried to reach peace without bloodshed. But Armenia deliberately stopped the negotiation process on September 27 and attacked our position by committing provocations. Therefore, Azerbaijan was forced to take action to stop Armenian armed forces and ensure the safety of the civilian population and liberated its lands. Today, after liberation, Karabakh is going along the path of development. The new situation in the region promises good prospects not only for our country, but the whole region. Reintegration of the liberated territories into the country's overall economy, new international transports and logistic opportunities will contribute to the formation of security, stability, prosperity and cooperation in the region. I strongly believe that India will become one of Azerbaijan's key partners not only in the revival of Karabakh's economy, but we will also en en enhance the existing cooperation in all areas of mutual interest, including political, strategic, trade, economic, peace and security, science and technology, and cultural fields. Finally, I want to say that we all understand that any war has br brutal and tragic results, and no matter who wins on the battlefield all sides, laws, and the end. Whereas young leaders of the world should cooperate to achieve sustainable peace not only in our region, but all around the world. That way, once again, I repeat, let's protect peace together and build greener, safer, and a better future for all. Seizing this uh, pleasant opportunity to wish strong, healthy, and everlasting prosperity uh, to the friendly people of India. Thank you for your attention. If anybody wants to, uh, uh, I would like to invite Mr. Cohen to share his opinions with us. Please, Mr. Cohen. Excellency. The Ambassador of Azerbaijan, Excellency Mr. Najif, the great youth leader and member of parliament from Azerbaijan, Honorable 
Deputy Secretary Mr. Sundar Singh from uh, the Ministry of Youth Affairs, President of the Confederation of Young Leaders and uh, distinguished leaders of the succeeding generation of India. Thank you. I am honored uh, that today I have had the opportunity of speaking with young leaders because I have been president of Delhi University Students Union and uh, that is how I got into travel and tourism business because I took a student delegation to Japan and when you take a delegation of 15 people you get the 16 ticket free. So uh, you see, uh, so that is how the travel bug bit me. And uh, we have another company, the my company is Stick Travel Air Charter Group, but Stick stands for Students Travel Information Center. And now we have a separate company dedicated to student and youth travel, which I am the chairman. And uh, this company issues the UNESCO. It's the only company recognized by UNESCO to issue the international student card. So Excellency, uh, uh, you know, my first uh, uh, introduction to your beautiful country was at His Excellency's ambassador's house. He's so passionate of selling his country that he showed us a beautiful film. And ever since that time, I have seen that beautiful film. I want to go to your beautiful country. And I had all my plans. And Excellency told me, yes, he'll issue the visas and everything. And he'll introduce me to the tour operators there so that we can start tourism between the two countries. He also said he'll introduce me to the Azerbaijan airline and we can start an air route. But unfortunately, we had the COVID-19 and uh, you know everything was put to a deep freeze. But it is rightly said that it is the darkest before dawn and every dark cloud has a silver lining. So I think uh, now the time has come and uh, Excellency Mr. Najif, you have come at a very appropriate time when India is reopening. From 15th of this November, we'll have, uh, you know, uh, e-tourist visa starting. And soon we'll have, uh, you know, scheduled international flights starting. So we uh, would like, uh, and I'm happy that this 20 leader delegation that will be going, and we would like to offer them, uh, you know, uh, tickets at cost price without making any profit so that, uh, you know, more and more people can travel. And uh, definitely there will be one free ticket in 20. <laughs> so, so, Excellency, today is also a historic day because uh, I'm grateful to the Ministry of Youth Affairs and I'm grateful to Mr. Sundar Singh that in spite of uh, today being a parliamentary committee meeting uh, of the Ministry of Youth Affairs and all the people being busy, at, I spoke to him at midnight and uh, I think he was kind enough to come. That shows the commitment of the government of India towards youth. Excellency, we have a Ministry of Youth Affairs and uh, as mentioned, an MOU is soon going to be signed. It's under consideration. And I'm sure uh, India has the largest young population in the world. And uh, you, I was amazed to see the uh, reconstruction that is, uh, you know, take, going to take place. I have just sent a message to my very dear friend who is doing for the Prime Minister's, uh, you know, um, reconstruction program. They are being, building 5,000 low-cost houses. One uh, project is there in Nagpur and they have a factory here. Within 7 to 10 days, they can build a house. And it is at one-third the cost of a normal construction house. And it is more strong than the cement house and a concrete house. So I immediately sent him a message if he can come. Uh, to India International Center and we'll organize uh, a meeting. But if it's not possible for him, uh, then uh, how long you're here, uh, Excellency? Only two, days. Only two days. So I'm sure uh, with the help of His Excellency, we'll organize a one-to-one -one meeting with them. So this event will become a beginning 
of a relationship between the two great countries. And uh, that will give me an opportunity also to visit your beautiful country. And uh, with these words, I once again express my deep sense of gratitude to the young leaders and their president and also uh, to the Ministry of Youth Affairs uh, for having accepted our invite to be here and also to His Excellency, the most, one of the most, I'm not saying it on his face, but I say it behind his back also, that amongst all the ambassadors I, I've met and I've met more than 100 of them, <laughs> he's one of the most dynamic and uh, he's very active in uh, spite of having very limited uh, staff and resources at his command, I think he does much better than what others do. So once again, uh, it's a great opportunity. I'm also thankful to our uh, media people who have joined us today, uh, particularly from Doordarshan and from uh, Travel World Online and Mr. Krishnan from the Economic Times. So we are really grateful to you and uh, with your help, uh, we shall make this a great event. Thank you. Thank you and God bless you. Thank you for sharing your ideas with us. If anybody has want to speak or has a question, then we can watch. Okay, after video we can, okay. Take another look at the country in their own unique style. Everywhere you look in Azerbaijan, there's another amazing view of a great character. It just never stops. You have to take another look. And then another. Baku is a city of the most amazing contrasts, ancient and modern, crazy and chill, and it thrill lives to take it all in, to take another look. But it's the people who make it all come alive. I look at these walls and I can see when they were brand new and the people who built them and what their lives were like and it feels just like yesterday. I can't keep up with Azerbaijan. It has so many challenges for me. Chris, desert, mud volcanoes, mountains, Caspian Sea. It just goes on and on. that excites all senses. So many textures, tastes, sounds, scents. There's so much to explore to take another look.